What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross, I like games, and today, we're gonna be looking at the new best key forge deck. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You see, we've had a whole bunch more chain bound events. The other day, I showed you the first deck to get to 14 chains. Well, the great news is, we've actually had a deck get to 15 chains. 15 wins, one loss, that's pretty gosh darn impressive. So I thought it was about time we had a little bit of a look at, let's just say, another Italian deck. Let's call it Ursula and say no more about it. When I did my previous video, a bunch of people said, yeah, we would like to see more decks that are doing well and an analysis thereof. So I thought, right, let's have a little bit of a gander, shall we? And one of the things we need to just point out right off the bat, this is a deck that is really good at stealing Ember, at stopping your opponent getting Ember. That is one of the real themes of this deck. Now, we've actually got Logo, Shadows, and Sanctum. We know by now that Shadows is really good at stealing Ember. But we've also got some stuff in Logos and some of the Sanctum capture Ember as well. So, if we start off looking at Shadows and this whole stealing Ember stuff, we got Ghostly Hand. Now, Ghostly Hand basically says... If your opponent has exactly one ember, steal it. That's often not going to work. You're not often going to find your opponent having exactly one ember. But you do get two ember when you play it, so that's quite nice. Nerve Blast says two of them. That lets you steal an ember. And if you do, do two damage to an enemy creature. One of the things we don't have here is we don't have bait and switch. That lovely card that basically gives you half of your opponent's ember or maybe even actually lets you have one more. You, you basically redistribute ember until you've got the same amount or one more, depending on whether there's an even or odd number of ember in total. But we do have too much to protect, which steals all but six of your opponent's ember. Bad news, that does leave them enough to actually forge a key. Good news... Well, we got plenty of other cards here that steal Ember, so we'll probably be okay. Magda the Rat steals two Ember when it comes into play, although when it leaves play, your opponent steals two. Moon Cursor lets you steal two Ember when you fight, and given that you've got Skirmish, you're guaranteed to survive the fight, so that's quite nice. Urchin steals an Ember when it comes into play, and then we've also got Dusk Runner, an upgrade that can be put onto any creature, and when that creature reaps, you steal an Ember. But we've also got some really powerful Logos cards here. Now, Neurosiphon's a nice one. If your opponent has more Ember than you, steal one and draw a card. Plus, you get the Ember bonus as well, which is pretty gosh darn nice. And we also have Effervescent Principle. Now, Effervescent Principle isn't quite the same as all this stealing we've been looking at. Effervescent Principle says that each player loses half of their Ember rounded down, and you gain a chain. No, it's not quite the same, but it still serves that same basic function of stopping your opponent forging a key... So that sounds all right by me. Now, the Sanctum cards here don't really have stealing Ember per se, but we got a couple of ways of capturing Ember. So there's two copies of Terms of Redress. You get the Ember bonus, which is nice. But a friendly creature captures two Ember. Now, when you capture, you take the Ember away from your opponent, put it on the creature that captures, and the rule is that when a creature with captured Ember leaves play, the Ember goes back to the other player. Or goes to the other player. It might not be back, to be honest with you. So this is alright. And you know what? Yeah, they get it back. But that doesn't matter. Because you just want to stop them reaping. And okay, they might get it back the very next turn. But they also might not be able to afford a key on that turn. And that sounds absolutely fine by me. We've also got Champion Tabris, or Tabris. When you fight, you capture an Ember. And given that it's a six power creature with two armor, yeah, that's probably going to stay around for a little while. Oh, and I should mention Dimension Door here. Dimension Door says, for the remainder of the turn, any Ember you would gain from Reaping is stolen from your opponent instead. That's probably a fairly important one to mention in terms of stealing. Now, we do also have a whole bunch of cards here that do what I like to term 
cheeky damage. That is to say, non-attack damage. So over in Sanctum, we've got a copy of Mighty Lance, which deals free damage to a creature, and then free damage to a neighbour of that creature, which I like quite nicely indeed. Lady Golgotha, before you fight, you deal free damage to each neighbour of the creature that you do fight. So there's quite a nice amount of cheeky damage going down. Then over in Shadows, we've got Booby Trap, an action that deals 4 damage to a creature that is not on a flank, with 2 damage of Splash. We've already mentioned 2 copies of Nerve Blast, whereby you steal an Ember and then do 2 damage to a creature. We've got Pawn Sacrifice, whereby you sacrifice a friendly creature, and if you do, you deal 3 damage to 2 creatures. And then we've got Long Fused Mines that you sacrifice, and deal 3 damage to each enemy creature, not on a flank, bearing in mind you've then got all these other cards you can use to attack the flank creatures. And we see so much in these good decks, themes. And there are a couple of themes in this deck. The first theme is you can stop your opponent forging, which honestly seems like we're so early on, no one really knows anything about the game competitively yet. But certainly from my own playtesting and what I've heard from a bunch of other people, stopping your opponent forging, one of the most, if not the most important thing in the game. But then we've got a whole bunch of cheeky damage coming down as well. So they're the two major themes that we see in this deck, but we've got a bunch of other good stuff. Let's have a roll. Now, if we go through logos, there's no library access here. You're not drawing extra cards like that, but that doesn't mean these cards aren't good. We've got one copy of Phase Shift, one of my favourite cards in the entire game. It lets you play one non-Logos card this turn. That's good. And it doesn't have to be immediately, it can be any time during the turn. We've got Reverse Time that swaps your deck and your discard pile. Really, really nice if you can play a couple of key cards and then immediately just turn your small discard into your deck. Wild Wormhole gives you an Ember bonus and plays the top card of your deck. Can be awkward... But most of the time, that's awesome. Doc Bugden draws a card when you reap. And this is a thing. Logos draws cards. That is not the last card drawing we're actually going to see here. There's two copies of Dr. Esco Terror that gains you one ember for each forge key your opponent has. It gets really good when your opponent's about to win the game. And to be honest, it gets you two ember when you play it if your opponent's forged two keys. I don't think it's the strongest card in the deck. One copy of Mother that you always want whenever you've got any kind of Logos deck, because during your draw hand step, you refill your hand to one additional card. That gives you a phenomenal advantage. And there's a copy of Titan Mechanic. When it's on the flank, each key costs minus one Ember. That's pretty great. Ah, depending on who's using it, I suppose. And Valen Analyst, each time you use an artifact, you gain an Ember. Gaining's not quite as good as stealing, but it's still pretty nice. Going into Sanctum, we've got Shield of Justice, a lovely action card with an Ember bonus that says for the remainder of the turn, each friendly creature cannot be dealt damage, and then you just go nuts attacking. We've got a Potion of Invulnerability, which says for the remainder of the turn after you sacrifice that each friendly creature cannot be dealt damage. Yeah, with Shield of Justice and Potion of Invulnerability, you're going to have some good Sanctum turns where you just go absolutely nuts fighting. Do remember, though, that with Logos, you've got both Phase Shift and Wild Wormhole that could potentially allow you to play these cards, and then you could have a Logos turn where all your creatures are invulnerable. We have got one copy of Commander Ramiel, which when you reap, allows you to use a friendly non-Sanctum creature. It's not quite as good as Phase Shift, though it's not quite as random as Wild Wormhole. You can only use a creature, you can't play a card, but you know what? That could be really, really useful. You could, I don't know, maybe use Doc Buckton. Reap and draw a card. That could be fun. We've got two copies of Protectrix. When you reap, you may fully heal a creature. If you do, that creature cannot be dealt damage for the remainder of the turn. It's not around the deck as a whole, but one of the themes of the Sanctum part of this deck, you get protection, ladies and gentlemen. You are hard to take down. And then one Staunch Knight, which gets plus two power when it's on a flank. So whatever you do, make sure it's on a flank. 
Finishing off with Shadows, we do have a bunch of cards we've already talked about. In fact, we've talked about most of these cards. In fact, there's only actually one Shadows card I've not mentioned so far. And it's Nexus. It's got Elusive, meaning it's got to be attacked twice in order to take it down. That's pretty good. And when you reap, you get to use an opponent's artifact as if it were your own. Obviously, this depends on which artifacts your opponent's got in play, etc., etc. But this is another one that could be really, really nice and incredibly useful. This is the second analysis I've done of a deck which is crushing in chain-bound tournaments. And yes, I do believe that 15 wins, 1 loss does qualify it as crushing. Because remember, the more you win, the more change you get. So the more you win, the harder it is to keep winning. And frankly, ladies and gentlemen, what we see is themes. When you've got a deck that's doing really well, there tend to be certain things about it which make sense. This is a deck that steals Ember and is really good at doing cheeky damage. And then the logos draw you a bunch of cards and the Sanctum are good at protecting yourself. So you can have some board wiping turns where you just go nuts with Sanctum creatures knowing you're not taking any damage back. You can have some Shadows turns. Or Logos turns, where your opponent's just about to forge a key and you stop them. This doesn't have the hard-hitting headline cards that were featured in the last deck we looked at. That was a Time Traveler deck with Library Access and Bait and Switch. But it doesn't necessarily need to. And I don't know, like I said a couple times in this video, we don't know anything about Competitive Key Forge. It's too gosh darn early, but we can look at these chain-bound events and start to analyze them and start to draw some conclusions. And one of the things I'm seeing is you just need a strong deck with a couple of themes and some synergy and a deck that just works with itself. Because if we were all making it as a constructed game, that's what we'd be doing. I like this deck. It does not surprise me that this deck is doing well. Although, presumably, at some point, I'm going to find some random deck that doesn't look good that does well. And that's going to be a much more difficult video to make. But, ladies and gentlemen, today is not that day. It is, hopefully, the day where you tell me what you think about this deck. Going nuts while also remembering to be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, Where we talk about games and have a lot of fun. But by far the most important thing, as always... Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.